Hi everyone, welcome to our You Are Invited to Follow series. This series is for everyone, uh, whether you are a believer, unbeliever, skeptic, atheist, uh, religious, non-religious person, just it's, it's for everyone, it's for everyone. So I hope that you will tune in every week uh, with us and be blessed by this series. For today, let me begin by saying this. If you think of yourself in any way as sinner, as a skeptic, free thinker, atheist, theist, religious, non-religious person, or even a backslider, here's the good news for you and for me. And that is this, that regardless of who you are, what you believe or how you behave, Jesus invites you. That's right, he invites everyone and anyone to follow him just as we are. Because Jesus, you know Jesus, if you know Jesus, you would know that Jesus is never put off by our sin. That's right. He's never put off by our skepticism or by our unbelief. But you may say or think that, no, no, Jesus, no, no, thank you, Jesus, you know, but because I'm, I'm not worthy, I'm not qualified to follow you, Jesus. And Jesus would say, why do you say that? And you may say, oh, no, I don't see the need of God. You know, I, I don't think I need God. Or you may say, I'm a sinner. I'm a terrible person. I I mean, Jesus, you don't know me. You don't know my character. You don't know my past. I'm a terrible person. I'm, I, I'm not a good person. I'm not a religious person that I, I'm worthy enough to follow you. And do you know what Jesus would say to you? I think he would say this to you. You know, congratulations. You are the kind of person I'm inviting to follow. I mean, your sense of guilt and your sense of disqualification is almost like a qualification to follow me. And that's what Jesus would say, really. Or maybe for some of you, you might think or you might say that, oh no, no, Jesus, I, I can't come back and follow you again. You know, like I, I backslided and I've taken you for granted, knowing, knowingly I've drifted away from you. I have disowned you. I've doubted you. I've cursed you and whatnot. And if that is you, then Jesus would say to you as well, my friend, I've never expected you to be perfect. I've never expected you to be sinless. I've never expected you. I've never asked you to, that you are able to, that you would be able to understand that you are invited into a journey to understand everything and that you will be all right at all times. No, I've just invited you to just keep following me, to just keep on following me, not to give up. And you are still invited to start following him again. That's right. So everyone and anyone, regardless of who you are, regardless of what you believe or how you behave, you are invited to follow, to follow Jesus because he invites people like you and me, people like everyone and anyone that is out there. But wait, is this just my wishful thinking that I'm telling you? I mean, do I have a basis, right? Do I have a basis of saying all this on behalf of Jesus to you? I mean, I might be wrong, right? But well, that's exactly where we are heading today. But before that, let me just say this uh, one thing, because I want to challenge and I want to encourage all of you to go and start reading the four Gospels in the New Testament, the, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because you see, in these Gospels, you will find the life of Jesus, who he invites to, uh, to follow him, and what it means or how it looks like to follow him. And for that, let me recommend a reading plan for you for the next few weeks as you journey together with this series, all right? If you haven't downloaded this app, please go and do so. It's free. It's called Uversion, the Bible app. After you download this, go and search for this. The 40-day gospel reading challenge, it looks like this. Once you are in there, you will have the reading plan. And every day, it will give you a chapter or two to read from the Gospels. And in the next 40 days, you will be able to finish reading the entire four Gospels in the New Testament. When you do this, I tell you, you will surely, you will be the one to get the most out of this series that we are doing in the next, next few weeks. All right? So I want to encourage you, you can begin today. Now with that, let me bring you back to our discussion for today. And that is this, who can follow? Who can follow Jesus? And of course, we said anyone and everyone, right? Interestingly, the ones who can follow Jesus are the ones who think of themselves as unworthy, sinner, or skeptic. The ones whom the society uh, would label them as the bad guys, the prodigals, and whatnot, right? So let me show you. 
Let me show you an example of that, all right? Let me show you an example of that from one of the Gospels, and it's found in the Gospels according to Matthew. And in this account, Matthew tells us a story about his, I mean, about his own life, about how Jesus came along and uh, invited him to follow, all right? So here it is, Matthew records for us. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew, that is himself, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Now, but why? Why was Matthew sitting there? Well, that's right, because he was a tax collector himself. And, uh, but wait, tax collector? But, so what's the big deal, right? How does, how does, how does that make Matthew a sinner, right? Well, that's what we, we might think today, right? But it's a different context that we are reading here. So you must understand that at that time, Rome was ruling over the Jewish people. And Rome imposed heavy taxes uh, for everything and anything uh, upon the Jewish people. And Rome gave, interestingly, listen to this, Rome gave the job to collect taxes, you know, uh, to the Jewish people themselves. And many Jewish people took up that job. But the worst is this, that these Jewish tax collectors collected more than what Rome required the people to pay. And you know what this means? That's right. It means that all the extra money went into their pockets. And that's how the Jewish tax collectors became very rich people. At that time, the very rich people among the Jewish people were the tax collectors. And Matthew was just one of them. So you see, they were hated, they were despised by the Jewish people because these tax collectors cheated and extorted money from their own Jewish people. They were simply, I tell you, they were simply disgusting people that you can ever imagine at that time. And just imagine during that time, during the tension, here comes Jesus to one of these disgusting, despised tax collector, Matthew, and gave him an unexpected invitation. And the unexpected invitation is this, follow me, Jesus said. Follow me? Imagine the shock that the disciples of Jesus would have felt. I mean, he is a tax collector, you know? Matthew is a tax collector. Well, anything that Jesus said would have been justified except the invitation to follow him. I mean, listen, you are disgusting. You are worse than our enemies. You should be ashamed of yourself for sucking the blood out of our own people by joining hands with what? Our enemies. Now, if Jesus said any of this with this kind of tone and reaction, you know, or action, it would have been justified, right? Because that's who Matthew is. But wait, what? Follow me? How can that be? And the funny thing is this. Matthew got up and followed Jesus. Matthew got up and followed Jesus. I mean, it's not just the, the idea of like, how can you invite a sinner to follow you? And then not only that, but this sinner, this disgusting guy, followed him. But you see, if you take up the challenge to read the four Gospels, that's why I'm really encouraging you to take up the challenge to read the four Gospels in the next few weeks. I bet this is what you will see again and again. Jesus inviting all kinds of people, people unimaginable, even today, to follow Him. And look at what happened next. Matthew tells us what happened next. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, now here is what we know that it's not only, uh, 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 Matthew was not only invited to follow Jesus, but Jesus went to his house to eat with him and his friends. Now who are his friends? Many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. There you go. Now, it's not only Matthew that Jesus was eating, drinking, and associating with, but many other tax collectors and sinners. Because you see, well, these are the only friends Matthew have, right? His, his colleagues uh, who are also, what, tax collectors and sinners. Sinners, who are these sinners? Sinners who are simply non-religious people, right? I believe these are the people who don't even care about God, who, then, 
who, who doesn't care about religion and morality. And Jesus, imagine, Jesus was eating and drinking with them. Now, you know what this means? You know, you know, you know what, what this would look like? You know, can you imagine? I mean, just imagine Jesus would probably be what? Laughing out loud, enjoying, right? With this group of people, the sick people in a sense, right? While he was eating and drinking with them. I mean, that's what we do, isn't it? I mean, when we eat and drink together with people, we talk, we laugh, we, we, we enjoy not just the food and the drinks that we are consuming, but what? But each other. We just laugh, we talk, we... See, imagine that's what's happening. Imagine that's what's happening here with Jesus and His disciples, with these sinners. And my friends, this is where I would like to highlight to you a mind-boggling uh, concept or a mind-boggling picture. And I tell you, this can be quite disturbing. This can be quite a disturbing truth to some of you. But at the same time, I believe that this would be a liberating, liberating truth for others of you as well. And that is this. Jesus, from this we know, we see, that Jesus was very comfortable with such people people who were so unlike him and listen the people who were so unlike him they were also very comfortable with Jesus so in other words here it is Jesus liked people who were unlike him and people who were unlike Jesus liked him so if you are a if you are not a Jesus follower, all right, you may be skeptic, a, a free thinker, an atheist, agnostic. If you are not a Jesus follower and you have experienced anything but love and acceptance from us, who are what? Jesus followers. Let me assure you, it is our fault. Really, it is not Jesus' fault. It is our fault. The problem is with us. The problem is us who are still trying to figure it out, how to be like Jesus. But somehow, some of us still struggle and fall short to be like Jesus. Because you see, Jesus accepted everyone and anyone who wanted to follow Him. Even when He knew their thoughts and their sins. You see, no matter how unqualified, undeserving Matthew uh, uh, may feel or others may say of him, Jesus still invited him to follow, right? And here is an interesting thing that Matthew records for us. Because you see, while Jesus was kind of eating and associating with, with, with these people, with, with, with Matthew and his sinner friends, right? There were this group of people who didn't like what they saw at Matthew's house. And here it is. When the Pharisees saw this, saw this means what Jesus eating with the sinners, they asked his disciples, why? Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Now you must understand the Pharisees are the Jewish uh, religious leader, leaders at that time. And they were confused by Jesus. They were confused by how Jesus was behaving. And that is why they asked, how is Jesus eating with these sinners? Because Jesus himself is a rabbi, is a Jewish rabbi. In other words, he was a religious teacher as well, right? And not only that, but Jesus claimed himself to be the promised Messiah, to be the son of God, to be holy. So how can a holy God be mingling and mixing with sinners who are so unlike him? He was with the wrong crowd. He should be with other rabbis, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, the, the people who follow and keep the laws of God. Je In other words, Jesus should be with the people like him, shouldn't he? Well, that's what the Pharisees understood. That's what the Pharisees thought. It was the way of life. But Jesus wasn't, because that wasn't the way of life. Jesus came to introduce new way of life. Jesus came to introduce who God was and, you know, His heart for the people. And this is where, my brothers and sisters in Christ, this is where we, the church, we, the Jesus followers, need to do some honest reflection. And that is this. Listen to this. Is our church... Is our community a huddle place 
for like-minded Christians only? Because if the answer is yes, if the answer is yes, then we got the whole idea of church wrong in the first place. Because you see, when people unlike us come to our church or come to our community groups, will they feel comfortable and accepted by us? Will they? Or how about this? Will you? Will I? Will we feel comfortable and will we accept them for who they are just as Jesus would do? Again, if the answer is no, then how does that make us Jesus followers? And that's a tough question, isn't it? Because, let's be honest, when we are with people who are unlike us, and we start to behave with them unlike Jesus, where does that leave us? That's right. It leaves us perhaps in the place of the Pharisees. Because you see, it means that we have stopped following Jesus and like the Pharisees, we have started evaluating people who are unlike us with our own standards and sometimes even with the standards that we ourselves cannot keep up with. And I think, my friends, and I think, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I think this is one of the main reasons why many of our friends are averse to Christianity. So, if you are those friends, if you are those friends and you are watching this today, here is what I want to say to you. And that is this. Do not let any one of us, do not let some of us come in the way of considering the invitation of Jesus to follow Him. Please don't. Don't let any one of us come in the way. Don't let any one of our, you know, hypocrisy, hip, hypocrites, you know, hip, uh, hypocrisy, you know, come in the way of considering the invitation of Jesus to follow Him. Because you see, we are still learning to follow Jesus one step at a time. We haven't figured out everything yet. And I know, I understand, it can be disappointing, it can be discouraging to see some of us who profess to be Christians but are not really following Jesus wholeheartedly. But in spite of that, don't, don't miss the opportunity because of that. Don't miss the opportunity because some of us fail to do so because of that. Don't miss the opportunity for yourself to accept the greatest invitation that you can ever receive from Jesus. Don't. Really, my friends, don't. And you see, if you read the four Gospels, it will also become very clear to you that Jesus came to give an invitation to all people, especially to those who acknowledge that they are not perfect. They, they need something. They need someone or some help beyond themselves that they just feel and know that there is more to life than this, that, than, than what it looks like on the surface, that there's got to be more to life than this. But unfortunately, of course, the Pharisees and the religious leaders either, either didn't understand or they refused, knowingly they refused to accept the new way of God that Jesus came to introduce, right? And that is why these Pharisees, they were questioning and they were complaining about Jesus and how he was behaving, how he was associating with Matthew and his other friends who were tax collectors and sinners. And then Matthew tells us, because Jesus heard their grumblings. Jesus heard what they were asking and what they were doubting and what they were confused by, how Jesus was behaving. And so this is what Jesus said in response to that. On hearing this, their complaints and their grumbling, their questions, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick, right? For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. But the sick, now, <laughs> this can sound a bit mean for Jesus to say this, right? Especially in front of Matthew and all his friends. You know what I mean? I mean, referring Matthew and, and all his friends as sick people. <laughs> but hey, let's be honest, right? We are, all sick. we are all sick people in one way or another, aren't we? And I don't, I don't think I have to convince you on this, right? So you see, this is the reason why some people who think they are not sick, right? 
who think they have no problem, who think they are righteous when they are not. These are the people who find it very hard to accept the invitation of Jesus to follow. And so here's the point of Jesus. Here's the point of Jesus. That he has come to call, that Jesus has come to invite the sick people, the sinners like you and me. Jesus has come to invite people who feels empty and meaningless in life, who feels rejected, dejected, and defeated in life in some way or in one way or another, who feels that there must be more to life than this. Jesus has come to invite people who wants to explore life, who wants to find out more about life, who wants to explore meaning and purpose about life, about faith, regardless of whether or not you believe in God or anything at all. It doesn't matter whether you believe or not. You, as long as you have the willing spirit to want to just follow Jesus, you can follow. You can follow. But wait, fine, I understand that I I can follow Jesus anytime, anywhere with whatever condition I am. But wait, what does it mean to follow Jesus? I mean, I need to know, right? I mean, what does it look like to follow Jesus? Or what's in for me? I mean, let's be honest. Why would I want to? Why would you want to follow Jesus in the first place, right? Now, these are great questions. And all these will be addressed in the following weeks as we continue with this series. But for today, let me wrap up by telling you four truths about following Jesus that we can glean from this passage and from the rest of the Gospels that we are going to read and that you're going to read for the next few weeks, all right? Here it is, the first one. Everyone who followed Jesus were sinners. That's right. Everyone who followed Jesus were sinners. You see, following Jesus almost always begin with a sinner or skeptic. That's right. Taking one step at a time. It's as if like, you know, being a sinner or acknowledging that you are one makes you a good candidate. It's like it makes you qualified, you know, to follow Jesus. I mean, think with me. All his disciples who followed Jesus were sinners. All his disciples were sinners in their own ways. So if you think you are also a sinner in one way or another, which we are, right, which, which we are, You are a good candidate. I am a good candidate. Anyone is a good candidate to follow Jesus. So I hope that's an encouragement. That's a comfort for you to want to consider to follow. Here's the second one. Your unbelief does not disqualify you from following Jesus. That's right. Because if it did, there would be none. There would be none. There would be no followers of Jesus to begin with. The very first 12 disciples of Jesus didn't start following him by believing or by knowing everything about Jesus. No. In fact, they were quite fickle-minded, right? If you read the Gospels, you would know. I mean, the Gospel is so honest about that, right? I mean, they they recorded their own uh, sins in a sense, right? So, in fact, the the followers of Jesus were so fickle-minded, they were doubters, they were betrayers and whatnot. Maybe, maybe. Maybe for some of you, right, uh, your struggle may be, you find it difficult to follow Jesus because, you know, you have been considering perhaps, but you're struggling to take that step because there are so many things that you don't understand. There are so many things that you don't believe about Jesus or what the Bible says. You find it, you you kind of just wrestle with some of the uh, truths that you find in the scriptures. Now, here's the good news for you. You don't have to, my friends. It's true. You don't have to because you don't have to understand and believe everything about Jesus or what the Bible says to start following Jesus. I mean, it took, you know, it took about two years plus for the closest disciples of Jesus to to understand and to believe most of the things about Jesus and his teachings. They just simply what? All started to follow him from where they were whatever their condition were, with all their doubts and apprehensions. And so it is the same way with you and with me. You can start to follow Him. You can start to follow from where you are, just as you are. And for some of you, I know, I know, you may even say that, well, that that's irrelevant, you know, for me, because I don't even believe in the existence of God. So, well, I'm out of this, I'm out of this series. No, 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 no. That's okay. You don't have to believe even in the existence of God to begin to follow Jesus. I mean, you can really, you can just follow. 
You don't have to believe in the existence of God. You can follow Jesus. You can just read the Gospels found in the New Testaments. You can just follow His teachings, His principles in your life and see what it does to you and for your life, really. So you see, nothing can stop us from following Jesus. There is nothing, really nothing can hinder. Not, there is nothing that can stop us, uh, uh, stop you and me uh, to follow Jesus except a self-righteous and self-sufficient attitude that you can have, that I can have. That's right. So remember, your unbelief does not disqualify you from following Jesus. You can, you can, you can follow from wherever and however you are. And this leads us to the third truth about following Jesus. And that is this, you don't have to change. You don't have to change anything about you to start following Jesus. You see, Jesus didn't say to Matthew, Matthew, if you go and clean yourself up from all your sins, give up all your money that you have, you know, cheated, give up all your bad habits, give up all your sinner friends, I don't like them. You know, they are sinners, they are immoral people. And uh, if you go, if you start to attend church and start to be involved in the ministry and start to do good works, then perhaps I might consider giving you the opportunity to follow me. No way! No way that was not the case, right? Jesus didn't require Matthew to change something about himself in order to follow him. And that's exactly the same with you, with me, and with everyone. Jesus is not saying to you, Jesus is not saying to any one of us, Oh, you want to follow me? Oh yes, you can. You, 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 you can definitely follow me, but first go and change yourself. First go and clean yourself up. Change something about you, and then come and follow me. No! Listen, just as Jesus gave Matthew the invitation to simply follow him, likewise, you are invited by Jesus to simply follow him from wherever you are, just as you are. You don't have to change anything about you in order to start following Jesus. You don't have to, my friends. But listen, I must warn you about something. And that is this, if you genuinely follow Jesus for some time, you will eventually see a change in you. That's right. So yes, you don't have to change anything about you to start following Jesus, but along the way, as you continue following Jesus, you will see a change in you, a good change, that is. But why is that the case? Well, the answer is found in the fourth truth about following Jesus. And here it is. Following Jesus, because following Jesus is an invitation to a relationship, not a rule-keeping. No. Now let me ask you, have you ever been in love with someone? Did you start to uh, think differently or do things differently as a result of being in love? I bet you did, right? I bet you did. Because that's what it does to you, to me, when we are in a relationship. In other words, listen to this. There are certain things that you will never change about you unless you are in a relationship, in a relationship where you feel loved, where you feel accepted, where you feel cared, where you feel valued by someone in spite of who you are, in spite of what you have done. Isn't that true? Irrespective across all relationships. And my friends, that is exactly what a relationship with Jesus can do and will do for you and for me. Because you see, when you begin, when you start to have a relationship with Jesus, and you begin to know and you begin to experience that He loves you, that He accepts you, that He cares for you, that He speaks up for you, that He values you in spite of who you are, in spite of what you have done, I think you have no idea, I have no idea the impact that it can make in your life, in you. That's right. That is what a relationship can do and that is the invitation of following Jesus is an invitation to a relationship. So you see, if you continue, if you continue reading the Gospels in the New Testament, that is exactly what you will see in Matthew's life and in the lives of all the people who followed 
Jesus. Following Jesus is not a never. It's never. It has never been an invitation to a life of religious rule keeping. It has never been. No, Jesus never invited us to that kind of life. He invited us into a personal relationship with himself. And this relationship is open and free to everyone and anyone who wants to explore. Because everyone, because my friends, you, you and me, all of us are invited to follow. And you can begin following right now, today. Because you don't have to do anything, right? You don't have to say anything. You don't have to change anything about you. You don't have to understand, believe, or know everything about Jesus or what the Bible says. You may be a sinner, skeptic, atheist, religious person, non-religious, backsliders. It doesn't matter. Just come. Come as Matthew did. Just come and follow Jesus. Just get up like Matthew did. Did he understand what was it all about? No. Did he get everything right? Did he get cleaned up everything? No. But he heard Jesus say, follow me. And he just got up. And look what it did to his life. And one way you can do that, one way we can do that, is to journey with us for the next few weeks along with the challenge of reading the New Test- the, the four Gospels in the New Testament along with this series. And as you do that, my friends, I hope and my prayer for all of us is that you would become a better you. That's right. That you would become better in life. So everyone, don't miss next week. I really hope to see you here again the same time. Let me pray for all of you as we close our time. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your gracious invitation to all of us to follow you. Please help every one of us to hear and to understand your invitation. Give us that clear understanding. Give us that clarity of what it means to follow you and how it impacts our lives. And will you bless uh, everyone and anyone who tunes in and takes the risk to follow you. Speak to every one of us through the Gospels that we are going to read together, through the Holy Spirit this week and during the entire course of this series. Thank you for hearing our prayers and thank you for blessing us. We pray this in your name. Amen. 